My name is Doug Horn, and I work for the Assassination Records Review Board from August of 1995 through September of 1998. I was hired in 1995 as a senior analyst on the military records team and was promoted halfway through my three-year tour to become the chief analyst for military records. More than one decade after the review board shut down, I published my five-volume book, Inside the Assassination Records Review Board, in November of 2009. In this book, I present my conclusions about the medical cover-up surrounding the JFK assassination, about the alteration of the Zapruder film, and about the reasons why President Kennedy was killed. I want to thank the Future of Freedom Foundation for allowing me to present the basic conclusions of my book in this presentation. The name of my presentation is Altered History. Exposing Deceit and Deception in the JFK Assassination Medical Evidence. Uh, we know that uh, on December 11th, the final version of the autopsy report, the one that exists today in the archives, was taken to Dallas by Secret Service Agent Elmer Moore and was shown to all the Dallas physicians who had been in treatment room one. They were told to read it. This was the government's way of telling them, you're wrong. There was no entrance wound in the throat. It was a wound of exit. The bullet transited the body. And oh, by the way, the government knows that that's the bullet wound you missed in Dallas. You didn't know the president was shot in the back. That bullet came out the front of his throat. So you guys didn't know what you were totally doing and saying. And we're telling you, as the authority, the U.S. government, that you were wrong and that the wound in the throat was an exit. So by December 11th, when Moore took that report to Dallas and forced everyone to read it, by then these conclusions were finalized. And what's really amusing and interesting to me, and appalling really, is that in January 64, Rankin is meeting with Warren Commissioner, and he still has an earlier version of the autopsy report in front of him, because that's when he says, we have here in the autopsy that the neck wound was caused by a fragment. <laughs> He's talking about the previous version. So... Uh, this is an amazing, uh, almost a comedy of errors. And if it wasn't for the secrecy in place at the time, and the lack of openness in government, uh, these people would not have gotten away with this. In fact, if there had been a trial, if the accused assassin had not been murdered, and there had been a trial, as I've said before, most of this evidence would not have been admitted into the courtroom by the judge. The autopsy report would not have been admitted because of the chain of custody problem with the body and because it was rewritten so many times. Uh, the autopsy photographs would have been shown to the Dallas physicians. The defense counsel would have asked all of the Dallas doctors and nurses if these were the wounds they saw on the body, and as soon as they said, no way in hell, that's not like anything like I saw, the jig would have been up. That would have been it. And then the defense counsel would also have called many witnesses from the autopsy, other than the pathologist. They would have called the enlisted uh, autopsy technicians and the FBI agents. And uh, this cover-up would not have succeeded if there had been a trial. It would have been blown wide open. As it was, the Warren Commission got away with a fast one. They succeeded in never showing the autopsy photographs to the Dallas doctors and nurses. The key Dallas treating physicians and the key nurses that treated the president did testify under oath to the Warren Commission. Some of them uh, did so in Dallas, and some of them came to Washington. None of them were shown any of the autopsy photographs. And so they had no chance to say whether these images did or did not comport with what they saw. Uh, the thing you need to understand is that when Jeremy Gunn was questioning Drs. Humes and Boswell under oath in 1996, he asked them if this wide series of autopsy shots, all the shots of the head and the head brace. He said, are these pictures taken uh, before incisions or after you made incisions on the body? And both pathologists, both Humes and Boswell said, they were taken before we made any incisions on the body. So that's their official story. They're sticking to it, but we know now that that cannot be true. It cannot be true. The surgery was witnessed by Tom Robinson and Ed Reed and uh, Robinson, Berkeley, and Canada observed the same exit wound in President Kennedy's head that was seen in Dallas right after the body arrived. Therefore, the surgery took place at Bethesda. Case closed. 